It seemed like things were going just fine when God allowed Satan to attack my mind. Then my God put me back on the wheel just to mold me and make me strong while he healed not just my body but also my heart to make me whole and give me a new start. My God allowed me to be broken, to be broken so, that he so that he could heal me. When under pressure you can't seem to endure so much, you even despair for your life. When your heart feels like the sentence of death is designed for you to rely on him, not to depend on myself, but to lean on God and nobody else. My God alive. He allowed me to be broken so that he could heal me. My God allowed. Yes, he allowed me to be broken so that he could heal me. Yes, God allowed me to be broken. Yes, God allowed me to be broken. My God, yes, God allowed me to be broken. It was my love. Good morning and God bless you. God has brought us to another day. He has allowed us to see a new month and we are thankful to be standing in his presence today just to give him some worship, some praise, and some adoration. I hope, trust, and pray that your week last week was great, but even if it wasn't, you have the opportunity now to bring all of your burdens all of your cares and lay them down at the feet of an awesome God who can do anything but fail. I pray now that you would worship along with us, that you would invite the presence of God into that place and truly experience him right now. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for another expression of your loving kindness toward us. Thank you for this moment to worship you and to lift your name higher. Would your Glory, come in and fill this atmosphere right now. Would you simply have your way in this place, have your way in our lives. Get glory from everything that we do today. It's through Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Woke up this morning with my mind straight. Oh, the Lord. I woke up this morning Say, I woke up 
this morning Got a reason to give him praise Hey, I woke up this morning This morning, so the Bible stay, and I will shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, all the long we'll be singing and praising, got our mind stayed on the Lord, singing and praising with my. You can join in and sing that with us, brother. My mind is on the Lord, will be singing and praising with my mind. Somebody say, stay. Stay on Jesus. Now shout hallelujah. 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 Grandma said you can't hate your neighbor if your mind is stay. Stay on the Lord, you can't hate the neighbor. If you got your mind straight on the Lord, oh, the Lord you. Hey, hey, your neighbor, if your, your mind, mind, if your mind is straight, now shout hallelujah, 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 sing it hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Something about coming into that place and ushering up a, a, a word, a song, a melody of praise that just begins to release whatever it is that, that we've been carrying. Got a question for you. What are you thankful for? I want to challenge you right now in the space that you're in. I know some of us are at home. Some of us may be on the road. Some of us uh, are at work. But wherever we, we are, wherever you are, look around and if there's somebody next to you, you're looking at something that you have something to be thankful for. You have, you have family. I know that life doesn't always go like we want it to. Sometimes we get into it with our loved ones. But look at that person and say, God, thank you. You saw us through this thing. You're carrying us through this thing. So we thank you because together we come to this moment and we give you a shout of praise and we say hallelujah. We walk up with our mind focused on finding you. And God, we ask you to find us and hear our hearts as we open up to you. Hallelujah. I hope that, that as you do that, as uncomfortable as it feels, but actually putting words into action. There's something that, that about that just releases whatever that anxiety is. I can look at you and say, thank God for you. And he's pulling us through this thing, whatever it is. And we pray that this song is your testimony. Through all I have gone through, Lord, it was you. Through all I have gone through, Lord, it was you. with us. It says this, through all, through all, through all, I've gone through, I've gone through. Lord, it was, it was you, yeah, Lord, through all, all I've gone through, I've gone through. Lord, it was, it was you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, it was you. 
our, dis- our testimony. Hey, when I stumble, when I, stumble, when I cry, when I, cry when, I felt light, when I felt light, I wanted to die. Wanted to die. Your other friends turned walked away. They walked away. You were right you here. Were right right here. here. Right here to stay. It was you. It was you. Lord, it was you. testimony. He'll never, he'll never walk out you. Say no, no, never, no, never, no, never, he'll never, he'll never walk out you. Say no, no, never, no, never, no, never, I'm a witness, he'll never, he'll never walk out you. Say no, no, never, no, never. that there's somebody in the midst of our dark days. He did something that he didn't have to do. He went to the cross for you and me. And even before that, he prayed to God. And somebody told me in the scriptures, it says that his his prayer began to make him sweat, and his sweat turned into drops of blood. That's a real friend. Somebody that loves you enough that they will bleed for you, somebody that will die for you, he'll never walk out on you, I dare you to try him, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread, he'll never walk out on you, no matter what it is, say never, say it again, he'll never, he'll never, he'll never walk out on you, do you believe it, no never, no never,
more time from the top. Y'all hadn't been here. Through all, through all, I, I have gone through. Lord, it was you. Lord, it was you. thank God for being the one who pulled you through every situation that you have gone through. Come on, don't be afraid. Like it up, love it up, put your hands together. Tell God, thank you for being the one that pulled you through. Listen, he paid a debt that he did not owe. Simply because we owed a debt that we could not pay. It was him. Nobody else but him. Buddha couldn't do it. Muhammad couldn't do it. Confucius couldn't do it. No other man could do it. No other woman could do it. Listen, they searched all over. They couldn't find nobody. They tried and couldn't find anybody. That's the reason why when John was out in the wilderness one day, John looked and he saw him and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the entire world. And I'm thankful that I have been healed by the wound in his side. There is a, there's a story that I am uh, reminded of, a story that I'm told of um, about a shepherd who had sheep. And one day, as they were out in their fields, as they were grazing, the sheep and the shepherd got attacked by a band of wolves, and they they attacked them, they, they ravaged them, they ripped them here, ripped them there, got hold to the shepherd and almost left him literally for dead. But rather than tending to his wounds first, he took the time to pour oil and ointment all over his sheep. And as a matter of fact, uh, he stayed up all night tending to each and every one of his sheep while his wounds went undressed. That night, he, he finished every sheep that was under his care. But when he finished, he had no more energy left to take care of himself. That night, he bled out and he died. And when newspapers heard about it, newspaper headings said, sheep, uh, shepherd died covered in sheep's blood. Can I tell you, that's what our shepherd did for us on a hill called Calvary almost 2,000 years ago. He hung in our place. He took our part. He died covered in our guilt, covered in our stain, covered in his sheep's blood. We thank him today for making that sacrifice. Each week we come together and we remember him for what he has done. We come and we celebrate him in a commemorative meal that we call the Lord's Supper. We take bread, we take wine to remember that sacrifice for him taking our place and taking our part. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Can we tell the Lord thank you today? Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, coming to this earth, dying in our place, and taking our part. Without him, we would be creatures most miserable. But we thank you today for reconciliation. We thank you for the cross. We thank you now 
for a relationship back with you. We do this in celebration and, and in remembrance of that sacrifice. It's through Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we eat together? Shall we drink together? Amen. Amen. thankful to have a friend like that. A friend in a time of need, somebody said, is a friend indeed. We're, we're preparing for the word now, and our, our prayer is that the time that we've sung together, that your heart has been led to that place, and all cares have been emptied, so that you can hear God. There is a word from him today. And I'm ready to receive it, and our prayer is that you are ready to receive it. We've missed being here and we thank God for a time of rest that we have not stopped praising him mm. and worshiping and living for him mm. because he doesn't stop what he does for us. And so the least that I can do is give him my very best. Somebody said it, this is a great time to be creative and to not be bashful with our, our, our worship and our, our praise and our lives to him. Even though we can't collectively come together in this, in this space, 
we can still collectively always live to him and lift up a word of thanks to him Amen. through our lives. Amen? Amen. He's a great God. And preacher just quoted words that say, I said, people searched all over. They looked for somebody and couldn't find nobody greater. And he's proven to be that. He's proven to be that for me, and I, I pray that he's done that for you. So we want you to join in with us as we sing this song with praise. It says, I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody great. Join in and just sing that with me. Searched all over. Couldn't find. No. 
nobody greater. Nobody greater. We've been through too much not to give nobody him what he Nobody greater. Nobody. Nobody greater than you. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. Nobody, nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. your heart toward heaven. Um, God, thank you. Thank you for, for this day. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this opportunity now to hear from you. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for keeping us sane throughout this time. And Father, I pray now that you would speak words to our hearts. I pray that you would give us what we need to make it through another day, to make it through another week. I thank you now for another preaching privilege. I thank you for a place to preach and for people to preach to. I pray now, Father, that you would send preaching power in this place. It's through Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, your glory is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence. Come on, Holy. Holy Spirit, you are. Come flood, come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, Your God, glory, God is, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by Your presence. Come on, Lord, holy, holy. You are welcome here. Come flood this place. Place 
and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, breathe God, is what our hearts long to be overcome by your presence. Come on, everybody, right here, Holy Spirit. Come flood this, this place, fill the atmosphere, atmosphere. Your, glory, your glory, God, God what my heart longs for, long for to be to overcome, may your presence love. it all you've got. Tell them you're welcome here. Mm, Holy Spirit, Holy Come on. Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place. Fill the atmosphere. I feel him shifting. Your glory. What our heart longs for. Welcome him into the place wherever you are. Your That's all we want to do is feel him today. We just want to experience him today. Come on. Right where you are, can you just put your chocolate-covered hands together and celebrate God for the great things that he has done? Amen, amen. His presence is welcome in this place. We always want God to feel welcome in the house that he owns. Amen, amen. Anytime the Lord don't feel welcome in his house, that's a problem. Uh, and so we always want him to know that he is welcome in this place. And we just simply want him to, to have his way. We simply want him to have his way. Amen. 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 To those that are joining us today uh, in the Cyber Sanctuary, we are so thankful for your presence. Um, God has blessed us one more time. And we are certainly thankful and grateful for that. Uh, to those that are here in the physical sanctuary, we are so thankful for your presence as well. Uh, and it's good to have our worship team back. Amen. Amen. Come on, can we put our hands together and celebrate them? We thank God for them. They have had some time off to get rested and rejuvenated, and I believe it worked. Amen. We are so thankful to have you all back today uh, to our music minister, our chief Levite, uh, Kenny Collins. Uh, thank you, man, for what you do week in and week out. So glad to have you back. 
uh, Kenny and Kim and Richie and Terry and Mike and Kendall and Cameron and everybody. We just glad to have y'all. To everyone else who's here in the physical sanctuary, Tatiana. Tatiana got a job. She's been missing church, but she's back today. <laughs> she told him, I can't come until after church, according to my pastor. And so we're glad that she is here. I'm so proud of all of our young people uh, can we just celebrate them? Come on, like it up, love it up right there where you are. We love our young people. Uh, they got jobs now. Hey, hey, Shando, hey, they, hey, they, they, I'm finna cut loose up here. They, they got jobs, which means our offering is going up. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, they mamas and daddies teaching them how to tithe already. Look at them. Uh, Kiki told me the other week, uh, she said, Pastor B, I, I told Tatiana how to tithe when she get that first check, uh, but I forgot her offering, so that means she brought double this week. Uh, but listen, we thank God for the wonderful young people that we have. Uh, y'all can't see Kendall in cyberspace. You'll see her when she comes back up later. Uh, but Kendall, uh, we want to say congratulations to her because she received the Reginald K. Murdoch Jr. Sponsorship Award. <laughs> And so we celebrate her, we celebrate you, we celebrate you. Kendall's getting ready to go off to college uh, in just a few more days. Uh, okay, we gonna, uh, lo, you, okay, Eula at University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Uh, make sure, we gonna make sure you stay corona free and all of this stuff. Uh, but listen, we are, we're so proud of you. We're proud of all of our young people. Uh, let's see, Casey's here. And uh, uh, Kara's here. Kara's, Kara's asleep during church. Uh, she was stuck her head up to let us know she was here. Uh, and uh, boss lady Arlena here. Kiki's here. Our security is here. And then Summer is here. Uh, we thank God Summer and the babies are here. Um, listen, I want, to, I want to publicly say this. Uh, a few months ago, uh, when race, um, the race riots were um, real heavy after the George Floyd uh, murder, um, Summer did something that she did not have to do, and it sparked a movement in our area. And Summer, I want to personally thank you for that. Uh, uh, it's all right to cry. It's, it's all good. Um, but you were a perfect example of what God requires of us. And that's to be good to people who don't look like us. Um, listen, some of them don't have no problem with me saying this, and I don't. I pray nobody takes offense to it. Uh, Summer ain't no black girl. Uh, Summer is a white girl that attends our church, and she is. And I, I'll be honest with you, I see color, but I don't see color. I see it because I know where we all just different shades of dirt. Um, and I understand the historical aspects of all this. Summer does not per se look like us or look like other people, but she took it upon herself to take her babies out uh, to Walmart, get some signs that simply said, Black Lives Matter. And it sparked a movement in the Jacksonville area uh, to the point where we had some marches. I wasn't able to attend all of them but I want to personally and publicly thank you. Can y'all just like it up and love it up for summer? We thank you. We thank you for that. And we are so blessed to have you as a part of our church here. And I want you to know that as your pastor, whatever I can do to support whatever you're involved in, I am here. Uh, we thank you for your boldness. We thank you for literally being the hands and the feet of Jesus. Um, I've said it week in and week out. We're not just going to be a church that meets on Sunday and Wednesday, but we're literally going to be a church that is the hands and feet of Jesus. We're not just the Rose City Community Church of Christ in name. We are the Rose City Community Church of Christ uh, in work as well. And one of these days, I pray that we can literally become the city of Bethany. Um, and if, if you don't know what Bethany means, Bethany simply means um, the house of welcome. That ain't my sermon today. But I pray that one day we will literally become the city of Bethany. Um, because literally, 
Bethany was one of Jesus' favorite places to go. Mike, it was the place where some people that he loved lived. Let me give you some Bible class since y'all been out for a month. Um, but Bethany Kim was the place where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus lived. Uh, and you remember that when they sent word to him that Lazarus was sick, they just said, the one that you love is sick. He loved coming to their house. Literally, he had a room in their house. And literally, I want us to be a church where there's a room, there is room for everyone. Yeah. Everyone. And so that's one of my prayers is that we literally become the city of Bethany where everybody feels welcome, no matter what color you are, no matter what creed you are, no matter what walk of life you come from, but you feel welcome at this place. And the first person that has to feel welcome at this place is the person that made this place. And if he don't feel welcome in this place, I don't want to be in this place. Um, and so, but we, 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 play, we pray that this literally becomes the city of Bethany, where it's a place where everybody feels welcome. Thank you, Summer. Uh, I've got a letter uh, that I need to bring with me from, uh, from the downtown church in, um, in Searcy, uh, from Dr. Monty Cox and the men there, the men and women there. Uh, I just, I keep forgetting it. It would have been great to have it right now. Uh, but I'll just summarize it, and we appreciate Monty Cox and the men and women that work along with him at the downtown church in Searcy. Um, throughout all of this, uh, they are the only, uh, the, one of the only churches, I think Pleasant Valley reached out to us the other day, uh, but they were the first church, the downtown church in Searcy, that says we need to strengthen our relationships with you. And so, Monty, if you're watching today, if you'll watch this later on, I want you to know that I appreciate you as the pastor of this church, and I thank you for what you and that church are doing and your efforts and wanting to be closer. Uh, and I promise you, when we all get together in heaven, it ain't going to be no black heaven. Right. Ain't going to be no white heaven. Well. Ain't going to be no Hispanic heaven. I would go a little bit further, but just know it's only one heaven. Yeah. Some of y'all are catching on our 40. It's, it's room at the cross for everybody. It's only one heaven, and we'll all be up there together. Some of y'all going to be surprised when we get there, and you're going to be wondering, Lord, did they make it? They sure did. <laughs> I'm going to be glad that I made it. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm glad to see y'all. I'm glad to be back in church today. Um, glad to, to have other folk with us in church today. Glad y'all are back. Let's run to the Word. I don't want to keep you long. Let's run to the Word. Come with me this morning to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Now I'm going to let you know from the beginning of this message, we might not shout a lot today. Um, and so my, my job as a pastor is not to shout us every week, but to challenge us at some point. Uh, one of the things that I've been praying and that I've asked you to pray for during this time that we've had off in July is that when we come back, we're rejuvenated, rested, and ready to go back to work. Um, the month of August is the month of new beginnings. Uh, it's the eighth month. Eight represents in biblical numerology new beginnings. Um, and so we like new things. But can I say and tell us today that new things bring about them new responsibilities. Yeah. Uh, and so I pray that we take this message to heart today, uh, that we can appreciate the things that will be said, that we can grow thereby. Luke chapter 17, I pray that you're standing at home. Luke chapter 17, beginning at verse number one, I'm reading from the English Standard Version today. And it reads this way, and he said to his disciples, temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Literally, what he's talking about is those around us uh, not causing them to sin along with us. Um, yeah, I'm coming back to that. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. 
And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, then you must forgive him. Watch this. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you could say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Okay, I'm coming back to that because that does not make any sense. But they said, Lord, increase our faith. That's verse 5. Verse 6, uh, verse six, he tells him, if your faith was just the size of a mustard seed, you could say to a mulberry tree, be uprooted from the place you're in, from the soil you're in, Kenny, and be planted in the sea. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back to that. And it will obey you. Verse number seven, will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keep keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and recline at the table? Will he not rather say to him, prepare supper for me and dress properly and serve me while I eat and drink and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank, uh, does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. Uh, It's going to be a little challenging. Holy Ghost, I need some help right up through here. I want to preach with your prayers today from the subject, growing pains. Growing pains. You may have your seats. Growing, growing pains. Mm. Lord, increase our faith. Growing pains. My God, I need some help right up through here. Growing pains is a term that has been associated with children at various points in their life. Uh, They are said, that are said to be growing. Uh, When I walked in this morning, And I saw Kara. I said, Kara, have you grown since the last time I've seen you? And she said, yes, I have. It's obvious that that she has grown another inch or two, perhaps three or four, since the last time I've seen her. And that was just a couple of weeks ago. Um, And it is possible to say that perhaps she has experienced some growing pains. Uh, They're pains that are said to be felt either in the legs or some soreness in some of your muscle areas, Uh, but it is all associated with growth. Okay, all right. Y'all praying with me today? Uh, It's perhaps a pain in the legs or some soreness, Mike, in the muscle area Uh, You know, you work out. We ain't hit the gym together yet. Uh, But you know, after you have exercised the muscle, when it begins to grow, it's sore, painful. Uh, But it's all associated with growth. Y'all in the house with me today? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I do not remember having a lot of pains in my body as I grew into the six foot one, 320 pound man that stands before you today. I don't remember a lot of physical pain uh, growing up because of my growing, but I do remember that there were changes in the things around me. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Uh, Kendall, clothes didn't fit uh, like they used to. Uh, Mike, I was always a husky boy. I had the little H on my pants. Uh, But Terry, there came a point when my clothes didn't fit like they were supposed to. Uh, At one time, Kenny Pants that would would have dragged the floor were now above my ankles because of growth. And so I noticed in my clothing that things did not fit the way they were supposed to. Y'all ain't praying with me yet. Uh, Things that I was once interested in 
uh, things that I once liked to do, uh, they were no longer of interest to me. I was, Casey, one of the first ones to have a PlayStation in my neighborhood uh, when PlayStations first came out. Uh, matter of fact, back in the day, I know some of y'all had Atari and all that. I didn't have none of that. I was too young for all of that. But I had Nintendo uh, with Mike the Duck hunting. You know, I would cheat and put the gun up on the TV and shoot the ducks like that. Uh, uh, but as I got older, there were certain things that would have interested me, Kendall, that no longer became of interest to me because I was growing. Places that I was once interested in going in, things that I once wanted to do because I was growing, I literally grew out of them. Hmm. Can I tell you, even some people, certain friends that uh, that I had were no longer around. Can I tell you, it was a different kind of pain, but I learned that it really didn't bring anything bad with it, but rather something pleasurable called peace. Hmm. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. In order for me to grow and develop into the man that I have become, there were some things that God had to take me through not to punish me, but to prune and prepare me for what he was calling me to. God was calling me to grow, and I had to go through growing pains. May I submit to someone today that because of what God is calling us to, because of what God is calling us to do, there are going to be some things that just don't fit us anymore. There are going to be some places that just don't fit us anymore. There are going to be some people that just don't fit us anymore. There are going to be some situations that just do not fit us anymore. And though it may be painful for a moment, it really ain't a bad pain. It's really a good pain so that he can make us better. Yeah. Similarly, Jesus is, was calling his disciples to something new which was really something old, but because it had become tainted, it had to be renewed, which was a right relationship with God. Can I say that again? Jesus was calling his disciples to something new, which was really something old, but because it had, it had become tainted, it had to be renewed, which was a right relationship with God. One more time for the person that missed it. Jesus was calling his disciples to something new, which was really something old, but because it had become tainted, it had to be renewed, which was a right relationship relationship with God. And may I submit to us today that what Jesus is calling us to today, what God is calling us to today is not something that's really new. It's really something that is old. But because of the people around us, because of certain places around us, because of certain traditions around us, it has become tainted. And so what God is calling us to is to renew the right relationship that he originally wanted from the beginning. Their old way of doing things had not drawn them any closer, but it had actually caused them to drift farther and farther away from him. Can I tell us today that sometimes our traditions, sometimes our traditions and our stances and, and the way that we feel about this, that, and the other have not drawn us closer to God, but they have actually pulled us farther and farther away from him. May I submit to us today, children of God, that there are some things that we should hold fast to. There are some things that we should believe in. There are some things that we should do. But may I submit to us today, when our traditions try, to trump the, try and trump the truth of God's word, then we have a problem. And I'll tell us today, I want God's truth over my tradition any day. I don't want to be far from God. Literally, they had learned how to perfect the law but they had forgotten the love of the Lord. They had learned how to do everything the way it was supposed to be done. They knew all of the church lingo summer. They knew what church was supposed to look like. They knew you had two songs before prayer, Kim, and one after. They knew who was supposed to sing. They knew four, four times, three, four times, six, eight times. They knew how the song was supposed to go. They knew when the music was supposed to move up, when the music was supposed to move down, what time we were supposed to get out of church, but they forgot to invite God to his own service. Do I have any help in the room today? 
They had forgotten the love of God. They had learned how to perfect church, but they didn't learn how to perfect people. They had learned how to do church the right way and live the law the right way, how to burden people, how to tell them this is what you're supposed to do, this is what you're supposed to say, but they forgot to show them this is how you're supposed to act. Hmm. He was, Jesus was calling his disciples to something new that had been showed and shared with them previously by religious leaders of that day. He was trying to get them to stop looking through carnal eyes and start looking through kingdom eyes and truly see things and say things like they were kingdom people. Beginning in Luke 15, parables are given in regards to repentance and reconciliation, all while restoring relationships. Let me give it to you again. Beginning in Luke 15, which begins the immediate context of Luke chapter 17, parables are given in regards to repentance and reconciliation, all while restoring relationship. One more time, beginning in Luke 15, parables are given in regards to repentance and reconciliation, all while restoring relationship. Can I tell us today, I've told us before on many occasions that more than anything, God desires a relationship with us. And when we have a relationship with him, it causes us to do certain things. It causes us to move in certain ways. He calls us into something different. And when you are in relationship with someone, you act different, you think different, you love different, you treat them different, all because of the relationship that you share with them. Can I tell you today that that's what that's truly what God desires of us repentance reconciliation and a restored relationship but all of this requires growing pains y'all got time for it today growing pains growing pains all of this requires growing pains hmm number one growing pains cause awareness in a relationship where character and consistency are a standard. Can I say it again? Growing pains cause awareness in a relationship where character and consistency are a standard. One more time. Growing pains cause awareness in a relationship where character and consistency are a standard. I need y'all to pray with me today. This is, this is a tough message. I, I, I feel God moving. Um, growing pains cause an awareness in a relationship where character and consistency are a standard. Can I tell you that being called into their new kingdom required a new way of thinking them, uh, of thinking. Jesus urged them not to just talk about, talk about it, but he urges them to truly be about it. Now he begins in Luke 15. And in Luke 15, he begins to take us through the parable of the lost sheep. And if you know anything about sheep, like we preached about weeks ago, sheep were dumb, dirty animal, Richie. They were dumb, dirty animals who didn't think for themselves, so they were quick to wander off. That's the reason why God says in Jeremiah 3.15, I will give you pastors after my own heart who will love, who will care for you because he knew that the people would need a pastor or need teachers or need shepherds who would cover them and surround them like, like God had surrounded them. Uh, so literally in Luke 15, he begins uh, with this parable of the lost sheep who the shepherd leaves the 99 to go out and get this one lost sheep because he has wandered away by his own ignorance. Uh, he's, he's ignorant and by him, him grazing, by him not thinking for himself, he moves out. But watch what the shepherd does. He goes and he gets this one sheep. He leaves the 99. And can I tell you that God has a way of leaving the 99 just to come back and see about you. Just to come see about you, his hands are not too short that he cannot reach you. He is not too far that he cannot hear you. Wherever you are, he does not mind leaving where he is. Truth be told, he's already where you are. But he does not mind stopping what he's doing just to see about you. And so then we, we, we look not only at the lost sheep, but then there's a lost coin there who is lost because the owner lost it. 
A coin was an inanimate object. A coin could not lose itself. Someone either, uh, the owner either misplaced it or somebody put the coin somewhere so they could come back and get it later. And so watch what the owner of this coin does. She sweeps the house. She cleans the house. She cleans up some things so that she can find what she's missing. And perhaps there are some things in our life that have to be cleaned, that have to be cleaned out of the way, that have to be moved around. Maybe our lives have to be better, have to become better. We need to do some in-house keeping so that we can find those things that we have been missing. Is there anybody in the house with me today? And so then uh, we move from the lost sheep to the lost coin. Uh, but then there's a lost son who's lost at his own will. He did it by himself. Uh, but can I tell you, the, the, the story really ain't about the son being lost at his own will. It's really about the father who keeps on looking for him, although he's lost at his own will. Ha! Literally, though he's lost at his own will, though he's lost on his own volition, he makes the choice to leave the house. He, he, he doesn't just wander away. Nobody just leaves him by the side of the road. But literally, he says, hey, man, let me get this money. Uh, let me get my inheritance early. Let me leave the house. Let me go on about my business. He spends all of his money, and then a famine comes. And remember, I told you the other week that when famine comes, it doesn't just affect one house. It affects everybody in the entire region. And so he loses is everything, but he has sense enough to come back home. And I know we shout about him having sense enough to come back home, but can I tell you, I find a different shout in the text that not only does he have sense enough to go back home, but I get happy to see that the father was still looking for him even when he wasn't at home. Come here, child of God. Isn't it good to know that God is still looking for you? He's still waiting on you. Literally, he can see you a long way off, and whenever you make the decision to come back home, Home. He ain't going to talk about how bad you smell. He ain't going to talk about how bad you look. He ain't going to talk about where you've been, how long you've been there, why did you decide to go there. But literally, he's going to open up his arms, and he's going to receive you. Why? Because he wants repentance, reconciliation, and a relationship. And can I tell somebody today that whenever you decide to come back home, whoever has been far away from God, if you come to this church, I'll tell you, that will welcome you with open arms. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. I'll tell you today, we'll welcome you with open arms. And the person that does not welcome you with open arms, you just bring them to me. I'll deal with them. The rest of the church will receive you with open arms. Here it is. He tells them, there's joy in heaven over one sinner who repents, comes back to God. There's joy. There's a party. They ain't sat on the front row or sat on the back row and said, you can't work in church no more. Hmm. Then I told, you got to wait six months before you get back involved in ministry. I ain't got no help in the room today. Then I told, we need to discipline you some more. Listen, can I tell you, God hadn't called us to beat up on nobody. Literally, he's called us to love one another and to work with one another. He says, confess your faults one to another, uh, not that you might be hurt some more, but that you might be healed. But rather than us being a hospital, Terry, we turned into a funeral home. We would rather have your funeral, and truth be told, Mike, we would rather cremate you and send you through the fire then help rehabilitate you and make you whole again. So literally, he tells them, he, he tells them, this, this thing is about repentance, reconciliation, and getting restored back to a right relationship. And when you get back in a right relationship, God has joy in heaven when you repent. Uh, when we look through uh, chapter, uh, chapter 16, we see, uh, we see about a dishonest manager, and then uh, we, we get right before chapter 17 to the rich man and Lazarus and how we treat everybody else, how we treat people that don't look like we do, how we treat people that don't have what we have. Uh, literally, the rich man and Lazarus, uh, the rich man had everything he needed. All Lazarus wanted, not his leftovers. He wanted the crumbs that fell from his table. And the man wasn't kind enough 
to even give him the leftovers that fell from his table. Can, can, can I tell us today, children of God, can I tell us today, children of God, it does not take much for us to be kind to people. It does not take much at all for you to smile at someone. It does not take much at all for you to be kind to someone and to show someone Jesus. I'm not saying you got to give everybody you meet a thousand dollars and invite everybody into your home because, you know, I'm still cautious. I'm still careful. Uh, But you can smile to someone. You can be patient with people. You can be loving to people. It does not take much at all to be kind to someone. You never know what an encouraging word can do for someone. You never know what a simple smile can do. But sometimes we can be so ugly with people. Hmm. Sometimes we can be so ugly with people. You go to a restaurant, they mess up your order. You get all ugly with the waitress or with the waiter. And I mean, I I get it. You want your stuff done right, but you can get your stuff done right without being nasty about it. Because if you get nasty with them, they might get nasty with you in the kitchen. I'm just going to let you know, if I ever go to a restaurant with you and you send your food back and you real ugly with the folk, listen, I don't want nothing else to eat. <laughs> Some of they might decide to put something in my food thinking I'm just like them. No, I'm, I, I'm good. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to grab something on the way to the house. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Watch this, watch this, watch this. He talks about how we treat people. Uh, Though there's a dishonest manager who has not been handling his business, he learned how to do business the right way when he needed something. And let me just tell us, let's not just learn how to do business the right way when we need something from someone. Let's learn how to handle our business the right way from the beginning so that we can always operate effectively and efficiently. Watch this, watch this. When we get to Luke chapter 17, after he has reminded them about repentance, reconciliation, and being restored to a right relationship. He then encourages them, uh, because I've got to tell you, when we begin Luke 15, he doesn't just begin with parables. Uh, The reason why he gives parables, you know, the reason why he gives parable is to give a story with a meaning, right? Because there are questions that are raised. Y'all remember that, don't you? Uh, And so he's dealing with Pharisees. He's dealing with religious leaders. He's dealing with good church-going people. And watch the question that's raised before the parables start in chapter 15. Why are you eating with sinners and with tax collectors? Listen, I know that there are going to be people who are saying, why do you fool with people like that? Why do you invite people like that to your church? Why do you welcome people like that in our church? Literally, when we become the city of Bethany, the welcome place, everyone will be welcomed at our church. Everyone is welcomed at our church now, for those that are watching. If you, if you got it twisted, everybody's welcome at our church now. I don't care what you look like. I don't care where you come from. Uh, we, we, we had a guy in here this morning uh, while uh, while praise team was was practicing and, and getting ready for worship, he just sat in the back. He comes in, he comes out. Uh, he just sat in the back and worship. Now my natural eye raises and looks at him a little strange because I ain't never seen him before, Mike. And you know, I start reaching from the side and make sure the people say. But then he said, Pastor, can, can I have an envelope? I saw him when I walked in. He was just simply praying. He got what he needed. He gave God what he felt like he owed God. And he went on about his business so that he could continue on with his day. And can I tell you, I want us to be a church where everybody feels welcome. And watch this, watch this. These religious leaders, these people who had been in church all of their lives, these people who had been in church all of their lives, they asked Jesus, the kingdom maker, the king of kings, lord of lords, why are you allowing these people to be your subjects? They don't come from the family that we come from. They don't come from the place that we come from. They don't have the pedigree that we have. They're sinners. They're tax collectors. They're known evildoers in the world. So why in the world are you allowing these people to become a part of your family? Because they repented. They've been reconciled. They're back in right relationship with God. 
even though they may not be in relationship with you. They've repented. They've been reconciled. They're in relationship with God, although they may not be in relationship with you. Watch this, watch this. When we get to Luke 17, he tells them, I need you to be careful with these people because they're fragile people. If you're not careful with these people because they're fragile, they may revert back to what broke them originally. Watch this. He tells them, and he said to his disciples, verse number one, temptations to sin are sure to come. Everybody's going to sin. I think I told us weeks ago that none of us are exempt from sin. When the world became imperfect, it could never be perfect again. He says, but woe to the one through whom they come. Watch this. Go to the next verse. Uh, he says, temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom uh, they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea, then that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. These little ones refers to the fragile ones that just got back reconciled to God. They're already fragile in their relationship. They're already cautious in their relationship. But sometimes we can cause other people to sin and go back to what broke them, cause them to have a relapse and revert back to it because of how we treat them. Because of what we invite them to, because what we invite them to be around. I said at one time on a Wednesday night, before anybody ever enters into our church building, they pass through multiple hands and they make a, 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 a determination about our church before they ever hear my voice. Back when we were meeting physically, the first person they meet on the parking lot is the parking lot attendant or our security. And depending on how that person treats them, it's going to make a determination on how they feel about the church. So if the security guard is ugly to them, if the parking lot attendant is ugly to them, oh, as soon as they get out of their car, they have already made one impression about the church. And you only get one time to make a first impression. So then they pass through the security guard. Thank God we have some wonderful greeters and sanctuary servants that meet people at the door. Sharon Ledbetter, we thank God for you. You're going to make sure you hug everybody before Corona started. You're going to make sure everybody feels welcome. God, we, we thank God for Sharon Ledbetter today. But if we were at another church and the greeters were ugly, some of y'all have been to church that they got the mean ushers. Don't y'all talk about my friends. Right? Them, them some of my friends, church. Don't y'all talk about them. But I'm telling y'all got some mean ushers. <laughs> but think if our greeters were ugly. Now they got handled wrong by the security. They got handled wrong by, by the greeters. That's two people. And then the ushers take them to their seat. You can't sit here. You can't sit there. But you can sit right here in the back. Now they've made a determination about us, by the parking lot attendant, by security, by the, by, by, by the greeters, by the ushers, and then they sit by you. <laughs> they sit by you, you start talking about, I don't like that song, I don't know why he's praying, I don't know why she's singing today, I don't know why he's singing today, what's wrong with this, what's wrong with that, why it's so hot in here, why it's so cold in here, oh, I can't believe he decided to wear that today, I hope he don't preach long, child, I got so much stuff to do. You know, we really didn't want him no way. We just kind of settled for him. But I guess he'll do. Now, they pass through four people with a negative experience. And then I get up, good morning, Rose City. It's so good to see you today. Welcome to the house of God. They wonder, where this man come from? <laughs> it's comical, but we've caused fragile people to get worse. They then begin to doubt God. Okay, God, if you couldn't change all these people, if they act like this, why do I want to be a part of this place? So watch what happens. Jesus says, he says, pay attention to yourselves. Watch how you act, because can I tell you, when you get closer to God, when you grow in God, there is more that is required of you. Kenny Kim, as all of your kids have grown, as, as all of your kids have grown, their responsibility at the house has increased. 
everybody who has children, as, as some, as you, you probably do a lot for your babies right now, but as they get able to help more and more, you say, grab this, grab this, make sure you don't tear it up. And as you grow in God, the responsibility that you have now uh, becomes more burdensome of you. Listen, there are certain things that I don't think are sin, but it's certain stuff I'm not going to do around you. Well, Pastor, what are those things? Ain't none of your business. I'm trying to keep you in a safe place. I don't want you to stumble. I don't want you to relapse into what broke you. Just because it's not a vice for me does not mean that it's not a vice for you. And can I tell you, we have to be careful of the things that we say and the things that we do around certain people because they can't handle all of that. There are some of you, you will never see me without a suit on because you can't handle that side of me. There are some of you, I, I can never let my hair down because you can't see that side of your pastor because you think he's a perfect man. And if you see me slip, if you see me fall, you'll begin to judge me and say, I know he wasn't nothing from the beginning. But can I tell you, I have hurts, I have hangups, I have issues, but I'm working on those things because I've repented, I've been reconciled, and I'm working on my relationship with God. And the first thing that this growing pain does for us, and I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm preaching a long time today. Y'all all right? Um, this, this, this relationship with God causes an awareness that asks for character and consistency. First leadership meeting that we had, I told every man that was going to work along with me, that is working along with me, that in order for us to have a good working relationship, we have to be men of character commitment and consistency any man any man or woman that does not have character commitment and consistency cannot work along with me pastor how can you say that because that's what leadership requires character is who you are when the lights go out character is who you are when no one is around you you get up and you start walking don't nobody follow you just taking a walk you ain't no leader Character isn't just a one-time decision. It's a consistency of good decisions. And even when you make a bad decision, owning it and learning how to keep moving forward. And so here it is. He says, listen, I need you to walk in a certain way. Watch this. He shows them that this relationship has two major responses. Be an example to those who follow behind you, those who are fragile in conduct and in character, the little ones. But then watch this. Here's the next part of it. He says, I need you to learn how to forgive, even if they ask you a whole bunch of times for forgiveness. Watch this. The first thing, the first major thing, the first major response, be an example to those who follow behind you, but be willing to exonerate those who have failed before you. Can I try you again? Not only should you be an example, Kendall, to those who follow behind you, but you have to be willing to exonerate or forgive those who have failed before you. Can I try you one more time? Because I know some of us ain't going to like this one. You have to be an example to those who follow behind you. But you have to be willing to exonerate those who have failed before you. Those who have let you down. Those who have done you wrong. You have to be willing to forgive. Can I tell us as a church, we'll never move to the place that God has for us if we, don't, if we do not forgive the issues of our past. Ouch, that hurts. We cannot continue to talk about things that happened in the past and not move forward from those things. There are some things that have happened in our past that perhaps may not have worked out the way we wanted them to do, but we cannot dwell on those things and expect God to continue to bless us. Can I tell you that before Job recovered it all, he had to pray and forgive his friends. I'm going to preach about it one day. Before Job was able to get back everything, his friends had to come to him for forgiveness, and he had to pray for them. Can I tell us today, forgiveness is not really for the other person. It's for us. Literally, if you decide to dwell in unforgiveness, 
live a life of unforgiveness. Literally, you are walking around with handcuffs on and you're shackling your own self. Every time you see that person, every time their name is mentioned, your face frowns up, you get all itchy skinned and all this stuff. No, baby, you need to learn how to let some of that stuff go. Like, like I said a few weeks ago, you have to deal with things in a healthy way and in a healthy manner. But then you have to learn how to move forward and keep moving on. He says, you forgive because you have been forgiven. God, how many times have we failed him? How many times have we messed up with him? And when we come to him, he doesn't say, remember when you did this? Remember when you hurt me? Remember when you talked about me? Remember when you forsook me? Remember when you disowned me? Remember when you blasphemed my name? Remember when you went to the club? God does not say any of those things. He simply says, I forgive you. So what Jesus says is, when they when they offend you, when they come and they ask you for forgiveness, make sure you forgive them, no matter how many times they ask for forgiveness. I'm almost done. Because others are watching, our character must reflect our calling. Okay? Because others are watching, our character must, must reflect our calling. Not only does growing pains cause an awareness in a relationship where character and consistency are a standard, but would you consider with me secondly today that growing pains causes accountability to a role where we have been commissioned to serve. Growing pains cause an accountability to a role where we have been commissioned to serve. Growing pains cause an accountability to a role where we have been commissioned to serve. Watch this, watch this. When you look at verse, number, verse 7 through verse number 10, you'll see that because we've been called into a new kingdom, it requires a standard of service, not just for, huh, for ignition, but for continual operation. There are daily things that should be done as a part of our routine simply because they are required for operation. Verses 7 through 10, he talks about servants. Verse 7 through 10, he talks about servants who God is, who, 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 uh, who um, a, an owner has, has, as he has servants. They've come in from the field. They've been working. And he, he, he says, he says, the owner doesn't say to them as soon as they come in after they've been out in the field working, come on, sit down and eat. Go on, go get cleaned up and eat. No, no. After you finish that job, now it's time for you to get dinner ready. Watch this, watch this. Holy Ghost, I need some help right up through here. After they finish working in the field, now it's time for them to get food prepared. Not because the owner is being evil, but because it's their duty as a servant. And after all of their tasks are taken care of, now it's time for them to sit down and eat. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Mm. Literally, literally, after we come in, we sing, we pray, we commune, we give, we hear the word of God. That's not the time that we're now supposed to sit back and say, whoo, I've done my due diligence. That's just the ignition to get us started. But for continual operation, now I go out into all of the world and I reach somebody, I teach somebody, I love somebody. And watch this, after I get stretched out up here, after I close my eyes in the sleep of death, then I'm able to go to another place and sit down and rest. I'm working on this side. Work don't just happen on Sunday. Work happens on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Work really happens outside of the church. And watch this. We work not for the applause of man, but because we have been given a gift by God. 
Literally, we are becoming his servants. We are his children. We are his servants. We are his people. And our lives are given back in service because he paid a price for our lives. We're not doing it so that we can get more from him. We're not doing it so that we can get more blessings. Well, Lord, I ain't going to serve you because you ain't decided to bless me. Okay, well, if we list everything that I've given you already and list everything that you've done for me, let's see whose list adds up faster. Field owner, the owner could have literally said, I've given you a roof over your head. I've, I've protected your life. I've preserved your life. I've bought you back from sin's marketplace. They could have killed you. Matter of fact, they would have killed you, but I saw something in you. And so now there is accountability in this role. You're not doing this because you just want it. You, you do it because this is the life that you've been called into now. Not so that you can get more from God, but because you've already gotten so much from God. Watch this. Because it is our duty, we do them without expecting anything in return. God has already been good and gracious to us. We should not expect him to do anything else. There's a song that says, if the Lord never does anything else for me, he's already done enough. Watch this. It should be my desire to want to do more in service for God because he's done so much for me. Watch this. Watch this. We have been called into a life of service, not to be served. It's not about how I feel. It's not about how I look. It's, it's literally about what I can do to continue to make him look good. Listen, when I leave this building, everywhere I go, I try to make sure, Mike, that I dress appropriately because I'm a representation of Rose City. You know, when pandemic was going on, it's still going on, but when barbers couldn't cut no hair, uh, I figured since my hair halfway decent, Mike, I could go a little while without it. Uh, and I remember I came to the office one day, and the boss lady said, are you, you, you planning to go another month with, without, <laughs> without getting your hair cut? And I said, well, I'm thinking about it. She said, stop thinking about it. Go get it cut. <laughs> Come here. Why? Because when you look at me, I'm a representative of the people that I serve. I'm because I'm a representative of the people that I serve, because I've been called into this life of service, I need to be a good representation when I go out. And can I tell you that when God saved me, when God changed my name and made me whole, accepted me as one of his, that meant I had to change who I was. I had changed my image, change who I am so that I can be a good representation of him. Can I tell you, even your children, even your children, as they get older, when you send them out, they get to the place where they can go out by themselves. You tell them, listen, don't you act up. Remember who you represent when you go out. And can I tell us today that we have to be good representation, good, good representatives of the man who has redeemed us. Listen, it's a difficult thing. But can I tell you, it is possible. Here's the third and the final thing. Here's the bridge that holds all of this together. Growing pains causes an awareness in a relationship where character and consistency are standard. Growing pains cause accountability to a role where we have been commissioned to serve. Uh, but thirdly and finally this morning, growing pains bring an appeal for resources to conquer any situation. Thirdly and finally, growing pains cause us uh, cause an appeal uh, for resources to conquer in a, any situation. Growing pains bring an appeal or cause an appeal for resources to conquer our situation, to conquer any situation. Watch this. Sandwiched in between our relationship to other people and our relationship to God as his servants. Watch this. Our relationship to other people as stewards 
and our relationship to God as his servants. Watch this. Watch the bridge that links these two together. Verse number five. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Let me try you again. In order for them to deal with the people who are following behind them, who have fallen before them, and to deal with the God who is above them, they pray and say, Lord, increase our faith. One more time. In order to deal with the people that are behind them, that they are called to serve and be good stewards over, and to, uh, to deal with the God who is above them, they pray and they say, God, increase our faith. Why? Because it is difficult. It's difficult for us to give and to serve without reaping a physical benefit. Mike, as much as you love cutting hair, you ain't going to cut no hair for free for too long. Not for the rest of your life. In order for me to forgive people that have hurt me, in order for me to be cautious in my speech and in my character around certain people so that I don't cause them to stumble. Listen, I try to help folk help themselves. That's the reason why I don't let certain folk talk to me a certain type of way, because I'm trying to help you help yourself and not catch the old me. But watch this. In order for us to bridge those two things together, there has to be an increase of faith. If we have an increase of faith, then everything else will follow that. Watch this. Why does he say, Lord, increase our faith. Why do they pray, Lord, increase our faith? Because they know that they're going to need faith to do the tasks that are set in front of them. Watch this. Here's what faith will do if you simply have it. Watch verse number six. And the Lord said, if you had faith like the grain of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. <laughs> Watch this. Growing pains causes you to make an appeal for resources to conquer any situation. As you are young, you think you can do it all yourself. How many times are you dealing with little kids? They tell you, I don't need no help. I can do it all by myself. Give it to me. Give it here. I can do it. But as you get older, you realize I cannot do it all by myself. Uh, although I can sing, I had a wonderful time leading you in praise and worship for the last uh, two or three weeks, but I'm so thankful that the worship team is back today because I can't do this thing all by myself. Matter of fact, one of my friends who don't even go to this church uh, hit me yesterday. Matter of fact, he appreciated his own church. I ain't going to call his name. He probably going to be watching later on. And yes, I'm talking about you whenever you watch our service today. But he called me last name. He said, Brax, I just got one question. Uh, is the praise team going to be back tomorrow. You know, I love you singing. I love you, but uh, is Kenny and the team going to be back tomorrow? I said, hey, bro, I love you too. I appreciate that. I know you're trying to slight me, but it's all good. Far as I know, they'll be back tomorrow. So I realize I cannot do everything by myself. And because I know that I cannot do everything by myself, it causes me to then ask for the appropriate resources so that I can conquer any situation. Come here, child of God. Perhaps the preacher is going to show up. He he says, if you simply have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to the mulberry tree, get uprooted and get rooted in the sea and it will obey you. Come here. That don't make sense. Why would I leave good soil and get into the sea? Uh, can I tell you today that God will take you from a place that makes total sense to a place that makes nonsense just so that he can show you how his power works. It don't make sense for me to get out of a comfortable place where I've been growing, where I've been doing what I need to do and get into the sea uh, because there's uncertainty in the sea. There's no place for my roots to take root. How am I going to continue to grow? But he says, if you just got faith, it will get up from there, move to there, and watch this, it'll keep on growing. Come here, child of God. If you just have 
faith, if you lean on, on the Lord, if you depend on the Lord, I know it's difficult to forgive the person that did you wrong. I know it's hard to forgive the person that lets you down, but if you have faith, you can speak to them, you can hug their name, you can say, God bless you. You won't say, may the Lord, may the good Lord hit you with the door split you. You tell them, I love you in Jesus' name and keep on moving, and then it'll make you keep on serving. Even if they don't call my name, even if they don't pat me on the back. It'll cause me to serve because God is still causing me to grow even without the goods that I thought I needed. And because he saved me, because he made me into the man I am, I'm going to dedicate my life to him. He ain't got to do nothing else for me. He does not have to give me another dime. He doesn't have to give me any more food. He ain't got to do another thing. But Lord, if I'm going to do this the right way, then Lord, I'm going to, to, I'm going to need you to increase my faith because if you increase my faith I can deal with people if you increase my faith I can deal with places if you increase my faith I can deal with the unknown I'm ready to conquer whatever it is you have for me but Lord just give me the appropriate resources to deal with it but that's growing that's growing pains it don't feel good I don't like being in a place of uncertainty. But if he gives me the faith, I'll follow. If he increases my faith, I'll keep following. I'll keep serving. I'll keep doing what he's taught me to do. But I need him to increase my faith. When other people walk out on me, when they fail me, Allow me to forgive them so that we can keep moving forward. Because, God, I don't want anything of me to hinder me from getting to the place where you have called me to be. So, God, I need you to increase my faith. Literally, he was calling them to something great, something amazing. But it was going to take growing pains for them to get there. Whatever we face, it can be defeated as long as we have faith. In order to truly function in this relationship that he's called us to, a crucial and most important ingredient must be added. For without it, nothing works. And that is faith. Our prayer today is that God... Would you increase our faith and give us the resource to handle whatever situation is in front of us? It's painful, but I know it's worth it in the end. God will take these growing pains because this growth is for our good and for your glory. I don't know what God is taking us to. I know some things that he's laid on my heart. It's painful to leave those things that are familiar. It's painful to leave familiar people and places because people start looking at you crazy. People that were once your friends, Terry, I don't know what's wrong with them now. The boy just crazy. I went off to the deep. Kendall, I've just learned I'm different, and I've outgrown some people because I wouldn't go where they wanted to go. And can I tell you, as you get ready to go to UALR, continue being you. Continue to stand on your principles and on your purpose. It's all right not to have a whole lot of friends. Jesus had a lot of followers, but he didn't have a lot of friends. Can I tell you, the higher up you go, the lonelier it gets at the top. But can I tell you that as you grow, God will give you everything you need to conquer whatever the situation is. Our prayer today is that God would simply increase our faith so that we can continue to have the awareness in a relationship where character and consistency are our standard so that we can continue to have accountability to a role where we are commissioned to serve. 
and ultimately so that we can appeal for resources to conquer whatever situation. Lord, our prayer today is that you would increase our faith so that we can get through our growing pains. If you're listening today, you're not a child of God. You're not a member of the body of Christ. You haven't been baptized for the remission of your sins. You don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins today. Ever named the name of Christ as your Lord and Savior. We offer Christ to you today. We want him to be your Savior. We want you to come into a relationship with him because ultimately God desires repentance, reconciliation, and a relationship. That's what he wants from you. That's what he wants from us today. And if you have never named the name of Christ, we pray today that this will be your day to do that. Listen, do the same thing that the people did in Acts chapter 2. When they heard that the same Jesus that they had crucified had been resurrected and had been made Lord in Christ, they came crying, saying, men and brethren, what shall we do? The response came back, repent every one of you and be baptized, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That day, those that gladly received, were, that received the word were baptized for the remission of their sins. And added to their number was about 3,000 souls. And watch this. God kept adding to himself because they kept praising God and having favor with the people. Can I tell you that when we put God in his proper place, that he will always continue to add. Listen, when we grow, there will be people that, that we lose. There will be things that we lose. But can I tell you, God will always replace whatever is lost. He'll make it better. He'll make it stronger. He'll make it last longer for his glory and for our good. If you need to be saved today, would you just simply write on that screen, invitation. You just simply will write invitation. We'll be in contact with you about how you can be saved, whether it's connecting with our church here or connecting with the church in your area. If you need to be saved today, would you just simply write invitation? But perhaps you're listening today. You're in search of a place where you can grow, where your seed can grow, where you can be a better steward, a better Christian. You've been looking for a place. You hadn't fit in in a whole lot of other places. You don't feel welcome there. Can I tell you, you are welcome here. Uh, and if you need a church home, you've already been saved. You just need a place for your seed to grow. Would you just simply write the word connection on that screen? Just write connection. A few weeks ago, a young lady decided to, to, to join our church, to become a member of our family here. She'd been coming for a while. During the invitation time, she just wrote connection on the screen. Sasha uh, is now a member of our church. We praise God for what God is doing because she believes that her seed can grow here. And if you believe like Sasha did, that your seed can grow here, just simply write that word connection, and we'll be glad to plant your seed and plant you here so that you can continue to grow in God. If you're listening today and you just need prayer, you've been dealing with some things, you've been dealing with some painful things, and it seems like you can't get over it, may I submit to you today, child of God, just give it over to God. Allow God to work with you. Just write prayer on that screen. If, let us know how we can pray for you today. We've been praying a lot at this church, and we have seen God move. And however he moves is all right with us. We trust him in our prayers to either change the situation or change how we deal with the situation. So whatever your need is, if you just need prayer, just write the word prayer on our screen. If you need to be saved, write invitation. If you need a place for your seed to grow, write connection. And if you just have a supplication that you want to give, you need some prayer, you need some strength, just write the words prayer. We're going to be singing now. However we can serve you, let us know right now. We say yes, we say yes, we say yes, we say yes. We say yes.
have a yes in our spirit. We have a yes in our spirit to whatever his will is, to whatever his way is. We simply say, say yes. Today we're praying for Saray Ford, for for Jen Brooks, for Tony Brooks, for John Reference, for Sharon Burton, for Jermaine Andrews. And we're also praying for Mahogany Bull Carter, uh, Halter, uh, for Felicia Thompson, for Cleotis Johnson, for Dorothy Parker, for Dwayne and Jackie, for Kim and Kenny, for all of our students, for all of our teachers, for all of our essential workers, for Charlene Warthon. We are praying for Carrie Jackson. We have so many that we are praying for today. Right where you are, would you just begin praying before we begin praying publicly? Right where you are, come on. Start praying, start interceding for these people who we have mentioned and for those that you know of personally. Come on, begin praying for them. We're getting ready to talk to God on their behalf. There's so much that we need to pray about, so many things that we need God to do. So go ahead and begin praying right now that God would move on their behalf. We believe that it's already done. Go on right now where you are, begin praying, praying for them. While you're praying, add Andrea Stanley to your list of prayer. Come on, we're praying right now. We're praying right now. We're praying right now. We're interceding right now. We're praying right now. Praying right now. We're praying right now. We're praying right now. Yeah, we're praying right now. We believe God is going to do it. We're praying right now. We know he's able. We just ask him to be willing. We're praying right now. We're praying. We're praying. We're praying for Tracy Lawrence. We're praying for you, Tracy. We're praying. We're praying. We're praying. We're praying. We're praying, praying, Tracy. We're praying. We're praying for everyone right now. We're praying. We're praying. We're praying that the victory is already won. That he's already done it. He's already conquered it. We're we're praying right now. We're praying right now. We're praying. God, we submit to you. Because there is no other help that we know. We thank you for what you have already done. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you are doing. God, there's so much on our hearts today. There are so many that need you. You know what their requests are. And so, Father, we're praying today that you would work in their lives, work in their situation as only you can, Father. They need you right now. We need you right now. All of us stand in the need of prayer for some reason or another. So, God, I pray that you would move in our lives, move in this place, God. Do what it is you do. We need you for our families. We need you for our friends. We need you for our health. We need increased faith, God, to deal with these situations. Father, we know that if you increase our faith, that we can do anything. We can conquer anything. And so, Father, our prayer today is that you would increase our faith so that we can enlarge our territory. But we know we can't do it if we don't have the faith to do it. And so, Father, we submit to you. We trust you. We just want to be in your will today. We want to be a place where you're welcome, where where you can move freely. And so, Father, I pray that you would increase our faith in you. Father, for everyone that needs you in a special way, be whatever they need you to be. Be with the sick. Be with the hurting. Be with those who suffer in silence. Be with our country right now. Be with our church. Be with our community, God. Do what it is you do best. Thank you for being the maker and the sustainer of our lives. Thank you for what it is you've done, for what it is you're doing, for what it is you will continue to do. God, thank you. Thank you for being a God who not only hears, but thank you for being a God who answers our prayer. We love you. It's through Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Kenny, we, we need something to I feel God moving in this atmosphere. Would you?
give us something before we do our offering. I just want to praise you forever. Say forever and ever. It's offering time in this place. We thank God for his blessings, and we thank him for the opportunity to be able to give back uh, to him. I thank you again for what you have been doing consistently uh, throughout our time uh, that we have been away physically. Uh, but we thank you for your commitment uh, to, the, to the kingdom and your commitment to God. Uh, thank you for, for what you're doing. Uh, because the responsibilities of the kingdom still have to go on. And we thank God uh, for that and for what you have done. The text still says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Uh, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. God loves a cheerful giver. We thank those who continue to send in their tithes and offerings week in and week out by mail. We thank you to those that give via PayPal. Thank you for those that, that continue to come every week and, and drop it by. 
We appreciate you so much. We pray that you will continue. Let's thank God, Mike, for these, for these gifts. Most high and awesome God, we thank you so much for this day and for all the many blessings that you've given us. Lord, we thank you so much for this offering that will be taken up on this morning, that will be used for the uplifting and edifying of your kingdom. We hope and pray that you continue to bless all of us in a special way, those who had to give and those who didn't. We know that you love us, and we know that you always take care of us and give us those things that we stand in need of. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. Amen. 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 We are uh, we're getting ready to go, getting ready to go. Uh, we're getting ready to go. Kendall, you got something? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, hey, camera got something. Lord, ain't God good. Hey. Ain't God good. <laughs> Listen, train up. with your time. Tiny, you bring your time for that? Uh, Oh, okay. It's it's all right. We'll get your envelope. We'll get your get Tatiana envelope. I, I love it when the babies get come on, do it right now. Anthony, bring Tatiana envelope. Uh, yeah. Listen, when I used to work for Southwestern, uh, when I used to work for Southwestern, um, and I would raise money every night, every now and then some somebody would send a baby up to the front yes. with their offering. And um, <laughs> I ain't gonna call the preacher's name, but he, he got upset because I had a basket that they would dump all the money into. Because uh, I ain't want them to come up missing anyway. Uh, but I would love to see the babies come and bring their gifts uh, and drop them in the bag. Uh, and so we, we thank God uh, for our young people and for their parents teaching them the example of how to give back to God. Amen. We, we appreciate you so much. Uh, train up a child in the way they should go. Uh, and when they get old, they won't depart from it. It don't mean they won't go through some things. It just means that they'll have a foundation that keeps them. And so whenever they repent and become reconciled, they can get back in relationship. God will open his arms and welcome them back. We thank God. We thank God for, uh, for these gifts. We thank God for you parents teaching your children how to give back to God. And let me tell you, let, let me tell you, the more y'all give to God, He's going to keep on giving to you. You cannot beat God's giving, no matter how hard you try. Listen, I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. I've been trying, God. Come on, Tatiana. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> One of these days, we might start marching during offering time. <laughs> Listen, amen. Amen. Look at that. Look at that. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. I got, oh, come in. Oh, we got more babies coming. Hey. <laughs> Come on, come on. Yeah. These summer baby. Thank you, man. God is gonna bless y'all. Watch. Amen. Yes, yeah, God is gonna bless y'all. I know he is. Yeah. They ran to bring their money. They ran. No, let them run something to bring their money. We thank God for that. Amen. 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 You know, when I uh, when I first got fired in Memphis, uh, the first place I went. Um, because I didn't want to hear nobody else preach that Sunday. I went to my pastor. You need to know who to go to at the right time. And I went to Hillcrest. I drove to Atlanta, got there late uh, that Saturday night because I was moving and all that stuff. And it just, it blessed me to watch them at offering time. They had a baby bucket. And the kids came out of children's church to put their money in offering. Y'all should have heard them quarters and pennies and buttons hit the bucket. But I was just so encouraged to watch them train up their children. So it does my heart good to watch the babies bring their offering. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you for your gifts today. We've already done our prayer requests by way of announcements. Um, I've neglected to do this. I apologize. We want to say happy birthday to everybody. Happy anniversary to everybody that has celebrated from March through July. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we, all of y'all, there's been a bunch of y'all, we thank God. I'm, I've even been in that number, uh, but we thank God for you. We'll get back on task with that this month. Uh, y'all forgive me, charge it to my head, not to my heart. It's been difficult passing through a pandemic. You know when your anniversary is, you know when your birthday is. At least you should, uh, especially anniversary. Uh, so we, uh, we, we, we appreciate you. We, we celebrate you. We, we're ready for August now. Uh, congratulations again to Kendall. Uh, congratulations again to Kendall. Kendall, we're so proud of you. We love you. Uh, Kendall received the Reginald K. Murdoch Jr. Uh, Sponsorship Award at the Arkansas State Youth Conference uh, over this weekend.
Listen, on Wednesday night, we will resume our Bible class via Zoom and conference call. So I look forward to seeing you in the Zoom room and hearing you on the conference call line, all right? I want to hear you. I want to see you. I prefer to see you uh, because maybe we can have more interaction that way. Uh, When we're on conference call, it's hard to unmute everybody and then mute everybody, then unmute and mute. So that's part of the reason why I don't take a lot of questions while I'm teaching uh, because it's real difficult. But if I can see you on Zoom, I can watch you raise your hands and all that stuff. So I would prefer to see you on Zoom. Amen. I would prefer to see you on Zoom. One more time, I would prefer to see you on Zoom. It's a little easier to have class if I can see you. Other than that, I'm just going to be preaching to you. Some of y'all would prefer that anyway. But anyway, uh, listen, I, I want to hear you. I want to see you on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. One call will be coming out later on this week about, about that. Also, remember to take your census. Remember to get registered to vote uh, because this year is a very crucial election. We got a whole lot going on. Uh, so make sure that you do your part. Your vote is your voice. If you say, well, I ain't going to vote, uh, I'm not going to vote, I don't want to hear you talking about nothing, uh, how this should have been, how this the reason why we like this. No, you have a voice. Use it in the right way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Those are all the announcements that I have. Once again, I want to thank you, uh, those who have been patient with us, those who have been praying with us throughout this time. It is difficult doing church right now, but we're trying to do it the best way that we can. And so I just want to thank you, those who have been praying with and for us during uh, these few months. Uh, God is, is taking care of us, and I believe he's going to continue to do it. I would just ask that you would continue to pray for us. Don't pray on us. Pray for us uh, that God will continue to hold our hands up. To those that come week in and week out, I want to again tell you thank you. Anthony, thank you for being here each week to make sure that we are secure and safe. Uh, Kiki, thank you and the team that work along with you for making sure that our virtual audience can see us week in and hear us. We're still working through some things. We're working through some issues, uh, but we're going to get it all right. We're doing the best that we can, and it's only going to get better from here, y'all. So we thank you for what uh, y'all. Every Sunday, it seems like we have an issue with technology. Uh, Demons be coming and bothering stuff. Uh, it ain't nobody but the devil, but God always provides a way. And so our team works hard to make sure that you can see, make sure that you can hear. Some weeks we're a little bit behind, but it's all good because at the end of the day, you still get the message. So listen uh, to Kiki, to Keith, to Keisha, to Tasha, to Mike, uh, to everybody that works in our technology ministry. I thank you personally because I cannot do ministry without you all. So I thank you so much. Uh, Arlene comes every week. We thank you. She gives us encouragement, gives us big hugs. We appreciate you so much. Boss Lady is up here during the week when I'm not here, when I'm here, uh, whenever I call, she's right there. And we appreciate her so much for everything that she does. Uh, Without her, our church would not stay afloat the way it does. And so I appreciate you, Boss Lady, so much uh, for what you do. Summer, the babies, thank you for being here today. Thank you for what you're doing for our church and for our community. We appreciate you. Uh, Tatiana uh, and Casey and Kara, thank you all for being here. Thank you for being such wonderful kids to your parents. We appreciate you. Kendall and Cameron, thank you all for what you do. And our worship team, thank you for the examples that you are to the rest of our youth group. Terry and Richie, thank you. Y'all, Richie comes every week. He's here before I get here. And uh, he brings this machine that sanitizes our air uh, so that we can stay healthy uh, as we're in here each week. Thank you so much, Terry and Richie, for what you all do week in and week out. Uh, Mike, thank you. Mike is here. Uh, Mike said, whatever you need, Pastor, I will do it. And I appreciate his spirit so much. Mm -hmm. And then to our chief Levi, Kim and Kenny, we thank you so much for the way you allow God to use you. We thank you for how you lead our music ministry. Um, And I'm thankful to have you back today. So glad that you are here working in this ministry. We cannot do it without you. Kim, thank you for being his strength when his is running out. Thank you for what you all do. Uh, We love you all so much, and we appreciate you so much. Listen, church, I love you. There ain't a thing you can do about it. I'm thankful for the privilege to be your pastor. I'm thankful that you all love me. 
and that you support everything that we're trying to do. I pray that you would continue to pray with and for us. One day we're going to come back together, but we're not going to do it before we can do it in a safe way. Uh, I'm not going to use anybody as a guinea pig, not my child, not my church. I'm not going to use anybody as a guinea pig in times like these because we care about your safety and your security. We trust God, but God also gave us smarts too. And so we're going to continue to worship this way until further notice. And one day soon, we pray to be back here uh, and back in, back in this sacred place. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night in the Zoom room and on the conference call line. Let's go home. All right, where you are right now, um, Pastor just celebrated all of us. But in your own your spirit uh, right now, just celebrate him for what God is. God has vision for this man. Bless you. And, and he walks daily to carry that mission out. And so we pray, and uh, we're going to end today a little different uh, than our the benediction that we've been doing. And he'll preach about us next Sunday for doing this, but uh, I, I just feel this right now, especially for the prayer request that we just had. So much to be praying for and thinking and living for. Uh, God just needs to hear us in our faith say, Ain't no need in worry. What the night is going to bring, help me sing, you'll be all right in the morning, help me sing, ain't no need in to you. I pray no harm come nigh thee. I pray God would bless your going ins and your coming outs. I pray God would give you peace in your labor and in your leisure. Pray that God would order your steps and your stops. Pray that by his grace he will provide for you, that by his mercy he will prevent from you. Pray that because God loves you, he will say yes to you. But also because he loves you, that he will say no to you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you, incline his ear to you, place his hand on you, and most of all, give you his peace. Through Jesus that we pray. Amen. Now go in peace. May the peace of God go with you as you endure your growing pains. It will be. It will be. It will.